Hello everybody, welcome back. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I like to post videos weekly. Be sure to click that bell notification. Okay, today I am making Hawaiian style ribeye steaks. To get started, I'm going to be using 16 ounces of fresh pineapple juice. This is not from Concentrate. If you do decide to use something that is concentrated or that comes out of like the cans of sliced pineapple, just adjust the sugar. I'm also using 10 ounces of low sodium soy sauce, four ounces of apple cider vinegar, one stalk of scallion. I'm also using a half cup of sugar, one piece of ginger. The amount is up to you. This is probably a one inch piece. I'm also using four cloves of fresh garlic and I just smashed those. Now I'm going to start making my marinade. So what I'm going to do is take a small sauce pot and I'm going to add all of the ingredients and basically bring it to a simmer. I actually think you can get away without actually simmering it. I really want it to just heat through, maybe get hot so the sugar dissolves and the garlic and scallion can start marrying and permeating well into this marinade. So again, all I'm going to do is combine the ingredients and warm and heat it through. Okay, so I'm going to continue adding everything to the pot, but I do want to mention, let's say you do not have low sodium soy sauce and you want to use regular soy sauce, just know that it's going to be a lot saltier. So my suggestion is if you do not have low sodium soy sauce, then maybe use something like five, maybe five and a half ounces of regular soy sauce and dilute it with water until you get the 10 ounces. Now I have not tried this, so I'm not speaking from a place of experience here, but I'm just trying to give you an idea that you do not want to over salt this because if you're using regular soy sauce, it will be off balanced. You want a good balance between the sweet and salty and tangy, the acidity from the pineapple juice and the apple cider vinegar. But then again, the pineapple juice does have natural sweetness along with the sugar. And speaking of sugar, a lot of the, these recipes call for brown sugar. I definitely suggest using brown sugar, but I didn't have any, so I just used natural cane sugar. Okay, so my marinade is heated through. I am going to remove it from the stove and let it cool completely. You do not want to add warm marinade or semi-warm marinade to your steaks. You want it to be completely cooled. And I've also reserved three quarters of a cup or six ounces of this marinade because I'm going to reduce it for a nice glaze later. Okay, so I am ready to marinate my steaks. I will be using four and a half pounds of ribeye steak. Here I have four steaks that are cut or sliced around an inch and a half thick. Now, if you're using something thinner, which is absolutely fine, just know that it might vary in cook time, but this is what I'm using today. So I'm going to add my steaks into a large Ziploc bag, just like this, and I'm going to pour all of that marinade that I have reserved in this large cup right into the Ziploc bag, and I'm going to place them on this baking sheet just in case anything leaks in my fridge. And I am going to seal it the best that I can, removing most of the air. Now you can definitely marinate your steaks in some sort of glass or Tupperware dish that you have, but a Ziploc bag works pretty good. And once you remove most of the air, it'll also submerge the steaks better instead of having to flip them over if you're doing it in a dish or something. So that's just something to think about. So I am going to marinate my steaks for somewhere between four to six hours. You can definitely do it overnight, but let me tell you why I normally don't. I will marinate it the night before, but I'm not going to grill nine o'clock in the morning. So it's going to be over 12 hours of marination. So that's why I just do it the morning of, and then I'll have it for dinner. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do with that reserved marinade. Basically, I'm pouring it into a small saucepan. And on a medium heat, I'm going to bring it to simmer and I'm going to reduce it 
by half or maybe a little more than half. I want it to be thickened and a glaze. So you don't want to put this on a high heat because then the sugars in this will burn before you have a chance to reduce it. So just watch for that. So here I'm going to turn down the heat because it's kind of boiling a little too rapidly, more than I'd like. So you'll have to watch it, but ultimately you will end up with a thick glaze just like this. Once your sauce has reduced, you'll just want to set it aside. I'm going to set it aside and even as it cools off, it'll continue to thicken and it'll be perfect to glaze these once we've grilled our steaks. So again, I'm going to set this aside and now I'm going to start my grill so we can start cooking these marinated steaks. Okay, so today is not the perfect day to grill, but I'm gonna do the best I can. So here I have my barbecue pit and I'm going to pour in a four pound bag of match light briquettes. I find match light easy to work with and you don't have to soak anything in lighter fluid. I don't like the taste of lighter fluid, so this is why I'm using it. So I'm going to stack these up in somewhat of a pyramid shape and I'm going to do my best to light them. It took several attempts, but ultimately I got there with the use of a paper napkin. So you're going to light them and basically you'll want them to ash over. And that's when you know the coals are good to go. They're nice and hot. And then you can sort of put them in a single layer. And I am a novice when it comes to grilling. So this recipe video is more about the marinade for the steaks than grilling them because you can definitely cook this indoors, broil them or do them on a, a cast iron skillet on your stove. So anyways, I finally got this thing lit. Again, you'll want them to ash over just like this and then spread them in a single layer. But here's another way you can start your briquettes. Here I have a charcoal chimney and underneath it, I am going to put two to three sheets of newspaper and I'm just going to loosely crumple them. You don't want to tight crumple and just put them underneath. And then on top, I'm going to pour in some charcoal briquettes light the paper on fire and wait till everything ashes over and turns gray. That's when I'm going to pour it out onto my charcoal grate at the bottom of the grill. So here we go. Okay, at this point, it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes for everything to ash over and get really hot. So here it is, 15, 20 minutes later. It's not quite ashed over on the top, but that's okay. I'm still going to uh, go ahead and get things started. So I'm just going to pour this carefully onto my charcoal grate. You want to use gloves at this point. I don't care what kind of charcoal chimney you're using. Things get really hot with these chimneys. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to start your briquettes. So I'm ready to start grilling these steaks. By the way, this recipe video is more about the marinade for this steak than grilling because I am a novice when it comes to grilling. So by all means, share your wisdom and knowledge of grilling in the comment section below to help others out, me especially. Okay, so you'll notice that I don't have briquettes across the whole bottom of the pit barbecue pit because I like to create a safe zone. Again, I'm a novice and things can get a little out of hand when you're learning, but you know, you have to start somewhere. So anyways, I am going to shoot for a medium to medium well steak. We do not like medium rare, but if you do, you might want to do something like four to five minutes on each side. I'm going to shoot for around six minutes on each side. So what I'm trying to do is trying to get those little crosshatch grill marks. 
but you'll want to just sort of leave your stakes and not play with them too much or move them around. But as you can see, there are flames shooting out of the briquettes. And what you can do is basically just cover it with your barbecue pit lid or control the aeration. There should be holes at the bottom and even holes in the lid to sort of control and combat that. So again, if things get out of hand, move things around, move it to the little safe zone and you'll be fine. Okay, so at this point my steaks are pretty much done, but I do want to add the glaze before I pull them off the grill. And as you can see, that glaze really thickened nicely. So I'll glaze them on each side and whatever's left, I'll take it back inside. And if people want to add more glaze to their steak, that's fine. But I'll tell you what, for a novice, I think I did pretty good with these steaks. <laughs> okay, so here we are. And as you can see, I also am going to be serving this with roasted potatoes. Be on the lookout for that recipe. I'll be posting that soon. But back to these delicious Hawaiian steaks. My house smells so good. So however you want to cook these, it's up to you. Stovetop, broil them, or grill them like I did. And I want to show you what the inside looked like. By the way, once you grill your steaks, you'll want to allow them to rest for at least 15 minutes so the juices don't ooze out of your steak, but take a look at that. That was six minutes on each side, so medium, I think, is what I got. It's not quite medium rare, but I have to try this steak. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please consider subscribing, and be sure to click that bell notification. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching!